Welcome back to another video in the electronics course, and in this video we're going to look at the large signal BJT model. So at this point in the course, we should understand the modes of BJT, and those modes will be the active, cutoff, or saturation mode, and that carries through whether you have an NPN or a PNP. Now, often the case, we develop simplified models as engineers, and why do we do this? Well, it's to make the analysis time efficient and easy. So for DC signals that are quite large, we develop these models for both, again, the NPN and the PNP transistors. So what we can do is say for an NPN transistor, if we're in the active region, we say that VBE, there is a 0.6 volt drop here, and we say that the collector current is equal to beta times IB. If we're in the cutoff mode, we know that the base current is equal to zero, the collector current is equal to zero, and that would end up that the emitter current is also equal to zero. So that's our pretty basic model for the cutoff mode. And for the saturation mode, again, we have VBE being equal to 0.6 volts, but we say that VCE is equal to 0.2 volts. And we have all our necessary conditions below each mode. Now for a PNP transistor, it's a little bit different, but fairly similar from VE to VB. We say that we have a 0.6 volt drop. And we say again that the collector current is equal to beta times IB. Cutoff mode, pretty straightforward, just like with the NPN. And in the saturation mode, again, we have this 0.6 volt drop from E to B, or the emitter to the base. And now we say that VEC is equal to 0.2 volts. And again, we have our appropriate conditions. So let's look at an example. And in this example, we are going to consider a gain or beta equal to 100 and 300. So we can simplify this slightly by taking this VCC source we see that through R1, we have a path to form some base current. So we represent it like this, because we still have this 15 volt source right here. We kind of just separated the node. Now from this, if we do a KCL at the base right here, we simply say that 15 minus VB, that's going to be the current going in. That's going to be set equal to the current going out. So we could say that that's VB divided by R2, and then whatever the base current is. So we arrive at this equation right here. Now, if we look at the right-hand side, so we're going to do a KCL for the collector to ground, we simply get that 15 minus the voltage drop of R3 minus VCE minus the voltage drop of R4. Again, that's going to be equal to zero. So we have two equations, and it appears that we have several unknowns. So what's next? Well, it turns out that we may have too many variables or not enough equations. Nevertheless, we're left with the circuit that looks like this, and we're pretty familiar with how we can analyze a circuit that looks like this. Notice we have some resistor to the base, but that's absent here. But how can we transform to have this circuit turn into this circuit? Well, let's recall a previous course where we looked at Thevenin equivalent circuits, or I prefer to actually speed run the circuit and apply a pseudo source transform like approach. So recall that if we have something that looks like this, where we have a voltage source and a resistor, we can source transform that or pseudo source transform that per se into a current source, which is equal to the voltage divided by the resistor in the circuit here. And then we just have our resistor in parallel. So we can take this action to the circuit that we had above. So we know that the amplitude of the voltage source is going to be the amplitude of the current source times this equivalent resistance. And then we get this equivalent resistance in series. So this looks pretty familiar. And what we can do from this is simply say that from the values known above, that the amplitude of that voltage source is equal to five volts. The equivalent resistance is going to be equal to 3.33 kilo ohms. And we didn't really need to do anything with the right hand side. It's pretty fine as it is. So now what we can do is assume that the BJT is active. So we're gonna take our NPN transistor, assume that it's active and represent it by what we initially discussed in the beginning of this video. So now what we can do is inside this base loop here, we can just set a KVL given by this equation here. And that allows the base current to be found as this term. Notice we're not gonna plug in values because there's two options for beta to be in this problem. Now on the right hand side, we're gonna do another KVL simply around, you could say the collector emitter loop. So let's scroll back up. So what we get is 15 volts minus the voltage drop over this 1K minus VCE minus the voltage drop over, again, that 1K on the emitter now, that's gonna be equal to zero. And we end up with another term for VCE. Again, we're not plugging in beta yet. But given how this problem was stated, if beta is equal to 100, the base current is approximately 42 microamps. 
and VCE is approximately 6.52 volts. Now if beta is equal to 300, base current is equal to 14 microamps, and VCE is approximately equal to 6.31 volts. So what we can notice from this is that when beta increases, our base current decreases, and VCE is pretty constant per se. Now this isn't unintentional. The circuit is actually known as the four resistor bias circuit. And what this circuit will try to do is it'll try to keep a nearly constant base voltage independent of beta. And by that nearly constant base voltage, we get this balancing effect between beta and the base current. And in the next video, we are going to look at small signal analysis of BJTs, which is quite different from the large analysis. We do start to then transfer into amplifiers using transistors. In this case, it's going to be our BJTs, obviously. But if you learn anything new, please like, comment, share the video, subscribe, helps out the channel. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.